I want to take a quick moment to acknowledge my dear friend, Martin. Um, he's the creator of this most amazing forum, this most amazing platform. And this is nothing recent. Martin is a pioneer. He, I think you started this, Martin, maybe five, six years ago when Zoom was totally unknown. You were the first to use Zoom. And then all the teachers started to use Zoom. And now, of course, Zoom has 200 million subscribers during this time. <laughs> and uh, Martin just has an amazing life story to tell. Uh, he had a thriving career. Then he had kidney failure. His sister, she donated her kidney. Uh, he had a kidney transplant. It didn't, it was not. Uh, successful. He went back on dialysis. He would do dialysis five times a day, five times. He couldn't be more than four hours away from his home. Just incredible life journey. And then he deeply immersed himself in, in Qigong. Then another miracle happened, I think about a year ago, he had another kidney donor and he had another second kidney transplant. And now he's free of the dialysis and tubes. And he's writing a book about him. And uh, it's my great honor and my great pleasure to know him. And uh, this is going back five years. He said that he wanted to make Chi Channel available for free. There would never be a charge. So it's accessible to people around the world. We made friends with people in Colombia, in Turkey, in India, and in Iran, where they don't have PayPal uh, in Europe. Um, and then he also came up with the idea that we are teacher independent. We welcome all teachers. So thank you, Martin, for making this Chi channel available. And he paid for years and years out of his own pocket. Like Zoom is, I don't know, $20 a month or so, and he kept it going. I was active for a while, then I dropped off. So. We owe you a ton of gratitude, dear friend Martin. Thank you. So on to the topic of teacher Oe Keen Hin. Uh, he joins us, of course, from Penang, Malaysia. And this is your, I think, third or fourth time teacher. You're a very popular teacher. And, <laughs> and uh, he is a tremendous, tremendous teacher. I think I have known him for now almost 10 years and he teaches, he has student uh, training, M1, M2, M3, module one, two, and three. Um, he has authored many books, which are all av available on Amazon. He has DVDs. Then he has two colleagues who are actually his students, Teacher Pacey, so Teacher Pacey and Teacher Oi, they collectively run uh, Serenity Health Clinic in, uh, in Penang, Malaysia, where teachers from all around the world, they come for treatment and training. And then we have another powerhouse teacher, uh, Teacher Irma, she is in Holland. And uh, so three of them are colleagues. And it's a great testament to Teacher Oe's methods that both of these, Teacher Pacey, I believe, uh, used to be an accountant in her previous life, and she is now a tremendous teacher and uh, very strong. Um, so th then teacher Irma, teacher Oe and Pacey, they also pioneer something called eye therapy. It's nothing to do with Apple iPhones, but eye therapy is information therapy. They record Fachi, which is healing on MP3 players, and they put it in a box with, with a, 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 a copy or the photo of the patient and it runs 24 hours. And they have had tremendous uh, success uh, with children with uh, very hard to cure things like autism. And then teacher Irma in Holland, she took it even further. She started to work with, with uh, patients that are more advanced in their age with Parkinson's, spinal injuries. Uh, so just tremendous, um, uh, teaching methods and teacher Oe, I think it's fair to say he focuses on post 2000 teachings and they really work. I mean, his abilities are just totally unmatched. So 
with that introduction, Teacher Oi, I will pass it on to you. So please start. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Amil. Uh, first, a big thank you to Martin and Amil for uh, arranging all this. And of course, salute, we have to salute our frontline heroes. All right, uh, this pandemic is, is probably something that you don't see it in another 50 year or even 100 years. Yeah. Okay, now, first we look at how COVID-19 spreads. I think everybody knows how by now. So the virus spreads via droplets, aerosols released from our nose and mouth. Infection happens when you have sufficient viral loads inhale. Okay, the higher the number of uh, viruses that uh, you inhale, the higher chance of getting infected. Um, very recently, a few days ago, there's three centers, three research centers, um, together with the University of Helsinki, they came out with a report saying that tiny airborne particles emitted with a cough, sneeze, and even talking spread in an invisible cloud that lingers for several minutes and spreads quickly over sore cells. Now, something very interesting here that uh, you're talking about airborne particles, aerosols, right? So when you are coughing and all that, actually the droplets will just hit the floor fast enough, but not aerosol. Uh, we are gonna see what happens. Hey, where's my cursor? Now, WHO have some uh, basic protective measures. So you're supposed to wash your hands frequently, maintain social distancing, um, and then you are supposed to keep at least one meter between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. So if someone is not coughing or sneezing, it doesn't matter. Avoid touching eyes, nose, and mouth. Practice respiratory hygiene. Cover your mouth and nose with a bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Stay informed and follow advice given by your healthcare provider. Uh, the last one, save their skin. Now, what went wrong? Acquire rehearsal at... Uh, uh, Mount Vernon in Washington, all right? Hand sanitizer were given. So before each and every, uh, what do you call singer went inside, they have to use the hand sanitizer. And individually, they, they were spaced out during the rehearsal. Each and every one of them, they get their own sheet of music. That means you don't share with others. No shaking hands, no hugging. Now, 20 days later, two of the singers have died from the virus and 45 of the remaining 60 in attendance have shown signs of COVID-19. Now, if we're talking about 47 people out of the 60 were infected, despite the fact that they followed all the procedures, all the recommendations by WHO. So what went wrong? This man, Jun Chan, in Malaysia, is Malaysian. Eh? He observed something else and uh, he wrote a blog. I copied this from the blog. He said that, uh, well, in Malaysia, there was this lawyer that we called it, uh, we called him a super spreader. Now, this man, this lawyer, first infected six out of the 10 people that he had a meeting, and then eight out of 10, and then 10 out of 15. And then lastly, one out of 21. So the question here is why? Why the range is so Why You're talking about eight out of 10, 10 out of 15, and then one out of 21. A woman in Singapore hosted her bridal lunch with 
friends, three friends, all three, all three of them were infected by her. Uh, we have religious ceremonies here in Malaysia, frequent of all religions. The tablih um, happened uh, uh, in Petang Jaya. Yeah? 15,000 people were there. In fact, rate estimated around 15%. And then remember the choir that we talk about just now, that four seven out of six were entered. Although WH lines were observed. Now, what went wrong then? Jun Chan also look into familial clusters. So speaking between family members as, at close, just the sheer volume of course in me would be something extremely dangerous. In fact, there was a study done in 2003 in Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, they're saying that uh, speaking, close family members talking to each other unprotectedly is something rather dangerous. And he also observed something else very, very peculiar. He said that why a lower level employee at a bank, there was a bank here, an employee found positive, infected, because he attended a religious function. But surprisingly, she did not infect many people at the bank. Right? She does not speak much to many people. Right? Only about two out of the whole office of 30 staff. Super spread cases have a lot of speaking. So this is what uh, Jun Chan observed. Super spread cases have a lot of speaking, a lot of talking, a lot of chanting, and a lot of singing. He said this, he's willing to say that 90% uh, or more of community spread is probably from an infected talking. He's talking about talking, not sneezing, not coughing, not breathing. Uh, we have to breathe or touching. Talking is a main issue. Now, this is a study done in February 2019, all right, um, done in USA. If you look at it, the the picture there, you can see that breathing, breathing through your nose, your mouth, deep and fast or fast, deep breathing, and talking, speech, quiet, intermediate, loud, the particles. Look at it. From here, it is quite clear that speech, talking, is creating, is sending out plenty of aerosols. And this study conclude speaking produces by far in orders of magnitudes of more respiratory particles than any other event such as breathing, when you exhale, right? Coughing or sneezing combined. So a big issue that he is trying to point out here is that this article is trying to point out is that um, Speaking is something that is that we have to worry about. Now, then we look at this all over the world. What are people doing here? Wuhan, January twenty second. Everyone must wear mask while going out. Right. This is an author uh, the uh, order, order from the authority. And then uh, University of Maryland, April 3rd, 2020, surgical masks may help prevent infected people from making others sick. Right? The most important issue here, now they're talking about preventing the infected person from infecting others. The mask significantly reduced the amount of various airborne viruses coming from infected patients. And then, in uh, Zach Republic, email public. Now, if you look at the cases in, uh, in uh, Zach Republic, you'd be surprised. It is a country, if I'm not mistaken, with, with the lowest rate of infection. So 
This study was done in the uh, Czech Republic. Aerosols can be stopped even with a tissue or T-shirt, and it can catch up to 80% of droplets. So they are talking about mask for all in the Czech Republic, all right? And then very few days ago, CDC USA put it up on their website saying that use of cloth face coverings to help slow the spread of COVID-19. So advocating and asking everybody else to put on a, what you call a piece of cloth. They, on the website, they even teach you how to make a, a what you call a, a cotton face mask, DIY, do it yourself. This is what we see in a choir. This is reality, right? Now, so no mask, get a scarf. No scarf, get a tongue. Or stop talking. Now, what we are trying to tell you here, over here, is about what we do how we can prevent this COVID-19 from spreading, okay? From the healthcare point of view, the next thing is about what we recommend you to practice, yeah? What do we recommend for this uh, uh, COVID-19? How to stop it? We recommend our form of big lachi all right, small lachi. Now, why I said our form of big lachi is small lachi? Because, uh, uh, well, it is unfair for us to claim that this is part of Zheneng uh, Qigong. Many teachers are saying this, that, uh, hey, in lachi, you don't use, you don't synchronize with the breath. Why are you asking your students to synchronize with the breath? My saying is always this, the Proof of the pudding is in the eating. You do it, you try it, and you see the results, right? And then if you enjoy it, you probably will do it <laughs> the way that we want you to do it, okay? Synchronize with your breath, okay? So what we recommend you to do, and during our class specifically designed for this uh, COVID-19 prophylaxis or prevention, big lachi, small lachi, and our lachi is synchronized with breathing. We expect you to join our group. Yes. It's something like, I help you, you help me. <laughs> you join us, we build up the chip field. Okay. And uh, well, this is not our first class. We have, uh, we have classes going on for the uh, European friends. Okay. And uh, from the feedback, sometimes some friends, they, they wrote to ask, is the class only meant for C19? Well, it's definitely not only for COVID-19. The class is good for everything, all illnesses. Why? Why would you say that? Now, Let's go through some questions. The first three questions were sent to me by Amir. <laughs> Number one, the blue sky is very prominent in your big Lachi practice. I had a teacher come to Pakistan. He said, Zhenan Qigong secret weapon is the blue sky. What is it all about? I mean, that's not, it's not fair to me. He did not ask his teacher and then he asked me. <laughs> now, what do you see in blue sky. What do you see in blue sky? Endless space, right? And this endless space is something else that is rather peculiar. We can do a, a simple experiment. If you were to look at this blue sky, just looking at it, try not to blink. When you are not blinking, you will have to call up your ability to stay focused. Try not to blink and just look at it. There's one very important trick 
don't just look at it to appreciate the beauty of it. Look at it and feel what is happening in what is happening inside yourself. Now, how am I going to perceive what is happening inside my body while looking at it? You try to look at it as if you are looking out from the middle of your brain. That means I'm not looking out from my eyes. I feel as if I'm looking out from the middle of my brain. Look at it. Now, this is a fake one, right? This is, well, this, this is computer screen. But even this one, they will bring you good results. Just look at it and see, feel what is happening inside your chest and inside your head. It won't take you long, don't worry. Now you close your eyes, feel as if you are still looking out to the blue sky. What is happening inside your chest? What is happening inside your head? Open your eyes slowly. How was the experience? The trick is to connect to the blue sky. All right? And the trick behind that trick is to look out from the middle of your brain. Okay? At the same time, try to perceive what is changing inside your body. The information of the blue sky is overpoweringly strong, right? And strong in what sense? Strong in what sense? We're looking out at the blue sky. We're not looking out at the middle of the night, <laughs> all right? And we're not looking out at, at, at the time when it's going to rain. Some said that you feel that it's expanding. Some said something like uh, feeling emotional. Blue sky is vast, it's huge. Treat all as equal. Yeah? That, let the information get inside us. Then we will be sort of uh, tuning ourselves, tuning the frequency of our mind and body to the frequency of the blue sky. Now, when you do lot chi or when you do lift chi up, what kind of chi that you want to tap onto? We want to tap onto the chi surrounding us. We want to tap onto the chi that is from the nature. We want to make exchanges with the nature. If we want to make exchanges with the nature, we have to tune ourselves to the same frequency with the nature. And this is one very simple, yet very efficient manner, very efficient way. Okay? I hope I have answered you, huh, Amil? <laughs> Number two, when I started Zanang Qigong, I was told that we don't pay attention to our breathing. Uh, that's when you started. You, you are no longer a new bee. <laughs> so <laughs> you can ignore this question then. <laughs> Why the inhale during large chi open and exhale during close is important? What is the added benefit? Now, number one, it is not true. It is absolutely not true that in Zhenang Qigong, we don't do breathing. No, not true. 
remember, I'm sure more than half of you have done a lift chi up, pull chi down before, right? You lift up. I still remember Dr. Pang's voice saying that you pause for the breathing cycle. Now, what do you do? Why must I stop for a breathing cycle? Why breathing cycle? One breathing cycle. You are making use of the breath to pull down. You breathe in, you breathe out. You pull down on breathing out. All right? Now, so even, even at uh, level one, you are making use of your breathing. But of course, we are not talking about applying your, uh, synchronizing your breathing with the push-pull. Please, huh? I'm not saying that uh, when you do your push-pull, you should synchronize with the breath. No. Okay? Now, why inhale during large chi open and uh, exhale during close is important? Over here, we are trying to amplify amplify our natural movement. We are trying to open up more chi passageways, right? If you were to put your arms this way, and then you take a deep breath, I'm quite sure you are going to feel that my arms expanded, and naturally, you try to hold your arms. No good. Do it this way. You try to bring in on breathing in. Lousy. <laughs> See? So it is actually rather natural. It's very natural on breathing in, on breathing out. <sighs> okay? So by doing this, we are amplifying, we are magnifying the natural movement of a natural breathing activities and the natural open close. Okay, what is the added benefit? Um, you have to try it out. You do it without synchronizing with the breath, and then you do it synchronizing with the breath. I can tell you this, 90% of the people, right? 90% of the people, given them just 15 minutes, normally done correctly, they will synchronize their breathing, their breathing with the open close. Yes. Okay. Then I say that this is about natural movement. This is natural movement. Natural means you don't, the moment you, you relax yourself, this will fall in place. All right. Self-healing classes, what is the format and how they help students? Okay, this will come later. We'll, we'll talk about these uh, self-healing classes. Yeah? One question that many have asked me, they said, uh, how can, why, why are you saying that this practice develop ESP, extrasensory perception? Okay, we are gonna explain also later on. Yeah? Now, from Qigong perspective, how to stay healthy? Number one, Qi must be able to flow freely, right? So Tara flow is important. Tara flow means Qi going in, coming out easily. Okay, so this is number one. Now, so when we are doing big La Qi, we are strengthening this power flow. We are clearing a passageway, right? Number two, you are talking about abundance. The chi abundance is important. You must have sufficient chi so that the movement will be very strong, right? So you want to get plenty of chi, you need space. So this Tara flow and abundance is actually two sides of a coin. If I were to do this, I am opening up more chi passageway. I am opening up more space. All right? So that chi will be able to build up. Okay? And when I have sufficient chi to build up, the flow will be stronger. It will be able to clean up much better. Two 
two sides of a coin. Okay, one question here, I answer first. I find that I so naturally breathe in and out during push, pull, and lift, chair, push it down without doing it in purpose. Is this useful? Uh, I'm not able to answer this until and unless I see your practice. But if you lift chi up, you're able to do it synchronizing with your breath and in a very slow manner, then this is something very good. If you're still doing it very fast, um, then not really that good, okay? And lift chi up, what are the four, what you call uh, minimal requirements and all that laid down by Dr. Pang. Uh, you can find many places, yeah? One of it is that if it's done correctly, minimally, you would have developed your extrasensory perception. And uh, to reach that, also Dr. Pang has already said that you must be able to do the push-pull, slow down to one minute per cycle. Okay. So how to stay healthy? What is the purpose of doing this? Well, start flow and abundance of chi. Now, advertisement. <laughs> okay, this is uh, what we are going to do. American Time Zone 2, round two, version two. Uh, coming Monday, we we'll start on coming Monday and then this, there'll be 12 sessions. New York time is 9 p.m. to 9.45 p.m. Mondays, Wednesday, Fridays. Uh, and then we, we are still running the Europe time zones, uh, the class for Europe time zones, April 13 to 17, the five more sessions to go, right? Paris time, 10 a.m. to 10.45. And uh, this one is Monday to Friday. If you are interested, please contact us. Now, Why do you say that uh, this practice helps to open up, to develop extrasensory perception? We work on four areas. Upper yin tang, up dan tian, middle dan tian, lower dan tian. And then we work on the, uh, the lungs. Um, Put it very simply, those who have attended my class, who have attended my uh, Modi 1 and Modi 2, they understand this, that in our Modi 2, many people, they just develop their ESP. Yes. Without any specific exercises for, for what you call uh, uh, to open up your your, what you call your ESP ability and all that, right? There are, there are specific exercises. We all know that for your ESP to develop, one very important place to work is your upper dantian. Okay? Even in our Mori 1 and Mori 2, we don't do that. But why are these people develop that kind of a ability? Well, you must understand in a class, in a class, when you were talking about chi field, the most important person is the one that is taking the class. All three of us, we are in this line of job for many years, okay? All three of us, we are seeing patients. We are using ESP to diagnose patients. We are using ESP to check patients and to, to heal people. So the information of ESP is in our chip field, it's in the class of the chip field that we are leading. So when the information is there, if you, your chip passage rate there is clear enough, normally you just develop naturally, right? So that's number one. Number two, those who have attended my class, they know that only in the ESP class that we have we introduce specific exercises to, uh, to work on ESP development. Otherwise, you don't. But in this class, you see, the brain is very important. The regular three of the immunological function of the body, the brain is important. So we work on upper dantian quite a lot. 
later on you're going to feel the difference why we stay so yeah so we work on up tantian open close we work on chest right the open close a large one yeah as if you are a big bird spreading your wings all right and then we work on middle tantian and we work on lower tantian Okay, we work on these four areas. In our class, we expect you to stand, but well, tonight, I don't think we really have that much of time to explain all this. So you, you may sit down, you're gonna get the same results. Now, and we expect you to look far enough into the blue sky from the middle of the brain. Yeah, okay. A few points before we get into practice. Number one, this big large sheet is rather simple. I put my arms here, okay? So when I say that we focus on the, let's say, uh, the chest, we want you to visualize as if your arms, your hands are inside your chest. Don't touch, just visualize. On breathing in, you open up your chest to the blue sky. On breathing out, blue sky into the chest. Watch my elbows. My elbows are leading the open close. I'm not doing it this way. No, I am doing it now, exaggeratively. And my spine is moving gently. When I am completely open, it is slightly stretched. Okay? Very simple. Then, well, we are very nice people. Some who do not exercise much, they find their shoulders complaining, maybe after maybe a few strokes, 10, 20 strokes, right? No problem. You can do it small still synchronized with the breath, okay? I hope you have no question because we have to start practicing now, otherwise uh, we're running out of time. Okay, sit upright relaxingly. Look straight to the screen, to the blue sky, relaxingly. Look out from the middle of the brain, relaxingly. Pull in your vision and close your eyes gently. From the middle of the brain, think far away, far, far away. Think of the blue sky, the endless blue sky. Open up yourself in the blue sky. Focus back now. As if the blue sky is coming in through your crown into your head. down your neck, thorax, abdomen, your thighs, knees, legs and feet. 
Blue sky is outside. Blue sky is inside the body. Lift up diagonally as in lift she up. Up to eye level. Bring your arms in. Send chi to your upper dantian. We do big large chi. Synchronize your breath with the open close. With every open close, the head is getting clearer and clearer, brighter and brighter. Lower the arms to the chest. Open close, big here. Feel as if you're a big bird flying in the sky. Flapping your wings graciously. Blue sky is outside. Blue sky is inside. No difference now. Lower the hands, middle dantian. Open close. Feel as if we have two arms at back, opening and closing at the same time. Lower your hands now to focus on your lower dantian.
the lower Dantian is the center of the universe. I'm opening up to the blue sky, closing into the blue sky inside the body. I'm standing on top of the mountain. Blue sky is in front of me, beneath me, surrounding me. Sweeping all the surrounding qi to its lower dantian. Press navel with middle fingers. Restore your hands. Lift up diagonally. Lift up all the surrounding qi. All the way up, up to the blue sky. Pour down, lower your hands, bring qi down. Hands, passing your face, focus inside. Perceive the changes inside, passing chest. Restore the hands. Lift up diagonally again. Lift up all the chi, being at us, two arms at the back, lifting up at the same time. Up to eye level, san chi to upper dantian, and big la chi. Brain is getting clearer and clearer, brighter and brighter.
Lower your hands, chest level. Open up your chest to the blue sky. We are the big bird flying graciously in the sky. Blue sky is outside. Blue sky is inside. Body is getting brighter and brighter. Lower your hands, a middle dantian. Lower hands, lower dantian, two arms in front, two arms at the back.
within all the surrounding chi. Press navel. Hands on your navel. Relax, relax. Put on the hearty smile. Raise your eyebrows a little bit. Feel the glow inside your head. Send your smile to all the cells of your body. All the cells are smiling. Send your smile to everyone, to all our friends, to the whole world. Everyone is smiling back. The world is smiling back. The body is getting easier and easier. Bright turn brighter. The body is a ball of chi. Restore your hands and open your eyes slowly. Q and A. You have any questions? Yeah, if you have any questions, you can open your mic. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can open your mic or you can post it in chat. Uh, you can also email Teacher Ovi. Um, his email address is, is listed. So, do you, do you see the questions, uh, Teacher Oi? The difference between middle fingers or hands on, uh, it is again proof of the pudding. <laughs> You tried it out, and then you see the difference. Yeah, you can try it one session where you put it, and immediately after that you do it with uh, your palms on your navel. Doesn't matter if you inhale through nose and exhale through mouth during large heat. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. All right, but eventually, as you go further, you will know how to adjust your breathing. Benefit to chanting Kai He with big large heat? No, I don't think so. We do not encourage that. Again, I, I always say this, if you want us to get serious in your practice, you must apply logical thinking and analytical thinking. And one of it is uh, to uh, what you call a uh, Try it out, taste it out. We are not talking about something else that is so far flung, like uh, talking about what is inside the mind, mental work, not at that area. We're talking about comparative practice. Yeah. Do you consider chest part of middle dantian? Well, it depends on uh, which type of, uh, which school of thoughts you are in. Okay. Um, the whole column here from your, uh, let's say, yeah, from uh, uh, your neck your neck down to your navel, the whole section here can be middle dantian, depending, depends on which, uh, which school of thoughts. There's a reason why we put uh, the point 
at the middle of there as the midpoint of middle Dantian. With uh, that's better if you no know, no I think already feel a little. Uh, is there a benefit to chanting kind of? Do you consider chess? Uh, okay. okay. Now, so what is the conclusion? Please put on a mask. <laughs> Yeah, and for those of you who are uh, interested to join us, you please write to us, okay? Write to us. Um, put on a mask. You don't have a mask, use a scarf. You don't have a scarf, use whatever you can use. And always remember, okay, talking is an issue when you talk about this and when you put on a piece of cloth and of the initiation. Okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the practice and uh, thank you to Martin and uh, Amir. All right. Do yes, you have a you. website? Can you please go to my Facebook? Look for Winken Hin. O I K E N H I N. <laughs> okay. Great, thank you very much. I can unmute everyone and you can thank Teacher Ovi. But so good to see you and uh, we have recorded this. It will be on YouTube for endless replay. And we have lots of other thank teachers. You. Thank 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 you. Mm -hmm. Good to see everyone. Thank you very much, Martin. Take care. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Martin. Yes, good to see Teacher you. Teacher Thank you. Thank you. Take care. All the best.